let's uh, let's get going here. So, continuing in in Romans, uh, Romans chapter four, uh, at verse thirteen. Um, <clears throat> don't know when I'm going to get down through the end of Romans. It all depends on, on how, it go, or Romans 4 rather, um, but uh, it all depends on, on how we get through my notes and, and how much, you know, just how it works, okay? Um, all right, so uh, verse 13, Romans 4, 13, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, if it is a faith, that it might be by grace to the end, that the, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed not to only, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. For it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in the faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about to be a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in the faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, but, that, but it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Um, the parallel... The, we all we discussed. Remember back in John eight, I think it was it was last week or whatnot, where we talked about the Jews saying we're we're an heir of Abraham because we're his physical descendant. And what was Jesus's response? You remember that one, John eight? Does everyone remember that? Go back to John eight. Here. See if I can find it. Yeah. Maybe I didn't go over it. Maybe I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. John chapter 8. <clears throat> so the story, um, where's the verse? It's here. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Okay, so go down to verse, um, uh, start back at verse 2 to 2. Verse 31. John 8, 31. Everybody there? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Right? Remember we discussed that? The whole continuation, the enduring until the end, so that they would get their inheritance, right? <clears throat> and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. He's talking that there's Pharisees there. We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? So they're all insulted. You know, how dare you say we're in bondage? We're Abraham's seed, you know. Rah, rah, I'm Scottish, and you know. This is this whole, this whole thing about the, 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 uh, uh, the genealogy. And Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Now, continue. So he answers, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen of your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. 
But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they of them, We be not born of fornication. So they're starting to call them names, right? They, they're insulted now, now they're mad, and they're saying, Listen, you know, you didn't have a virgin birth. You're born out of wedlock, right? We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the loss of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of, of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Um, <clears throat> So the idea here is that the Jews, the Jews here, the Pharisees didn't get the message. It had nothing to do with them being physical descendants of, descendants of Abraham because that made them part of, of a nation but not part of God's nation. The issue was of faith and what they should have understood by the law itself, by circumcision, was that there was death to the flesh, and they were not looking at it. They were looking at it as a fleshly thing. I'm a descendant, therefore I'm entitled. You see? And they, they, they still believe that to this day. But. So the issue there was that the, the, the rituals became, the rituals, the fact that they had, they had uh, um, uh, a physical de de a descendancy, they decided, well, that's what makes us the descendants of Abraham. And when we go back to Romans chapter 4 here, what we see is that in verse 13, For the promise that ye should be an heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, so it's not to his descendants. As Jesus said, it had nothing to do with descendancy. It has to do with your faith. Right? Through the law, not or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That's what the law was supposed to point to, that they were unrighteous and they needed a Savior. And that's why Jesus there is saying, if you, if you were of God, if you, had, if you were of faith, you'd have seen this. Case in point, I was, I was talking um, with uh, a brother yesterday, and you know, I'd asked him, how did you come into Red Division? And he had a fascinating story. And, and, but I'll give you the Coles Notes version. Basically, he started off as a young man and he had been convinced of one thing. The Word of God was absolutely true. Amen. And he started looking at life that way. And he started to evaluate Catholicism with all of its rituals and so on and so forth. And he said, something wrong. I mean, do you really think that lighting a candle, that taking a wafer by drinking some wine or, or having incense over you or some sort of ritualism, do you really think that that is some sort of spiritual power? Even as a young man, he said, it didn't make any sense. And he was reading his Bible and said, the Catholic Church doesn't even agree with the Bible. They actually say the opposite of what the Bible says so often. So he threw, he threw that out, but he stuck with the word is absolutely true. And, and when he stuck with the word, he started looking at that, looking at that. that every time he heard somebody say something, every book he read, he'd go, there's something wrong. It doesn't fit with God's word. He had absolute right way of looking at it. The absolute 100% right way of looking at it. If we take the word, Hebrews chapter 4, just quickly go over to Hebrews chapter 4 for a second. And, and I'm going to show you something. But what the word does to the believer. Hebrews chapter 4. Oh, I'm going go there. Go down to verse 12 real quick. 12 and 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing ascender of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in its sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Jesus was saying, in effect, the same to those Pharisees. If you actually were of faith, if you actually believed the word, you'd be able to see what I'm telling you is the truth. And this, and this brother, he got up in his life and he's going and he, he, he always had that word going accusing no this is there's something wrong and then one day apparently he found a book on right division and all of a sudden click click how many people in here have <coughs> experience yeah. 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 it all makes sense it all makes sense but what do we have first faith in God's word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know how often you have people in the world, yeah. Satan started off in Genesis 3, saying, did God really say that? Is that really God's word? Right? And that's where the problems begin. So when we start from faith in God's word and go from that viewpoint, Hebrews tells us that the scales fall off our eyes and we start to see the right things. But if we are coming from a legalistic point of view where we got to make ourselves better, we got to be, you know, it's we got to give our offer to God and try to be the best we can, right? That's what happens. And that's what happened with the Pharisees. They thought that adherence to the laws and the rituals, that's what mattered. What do we see in Romans chapter 4 here? It says, for the promise that he should, verse 13, he should be the heir of this world was not to Abraham to see through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Faith, chapter 4, is all about the justification by faith. Right? In chapter 5, we'll see the, 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 what, what the results of that is, or what happens, okay? Um, and they, they should, let's go to, let's go to Matthew chapter 3. We got Matthew chapter 3 here in my notes. Matthew chapter 3, verse 5. Matthew chapter 3, <coughs> verse 5. 5 to 9. Then went out of and then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all of the region around the Jordan and they were baptized of him and Jordan confessing their sins but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come John's calling them out bring forth therefore fruits, fruits meet for repentance and think not to save within ourselves. We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. John the Baptist calling him out saying, You guys are coming out to be baptized. Like the, 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 the message was repent and be baptized. You're coming out to be baptized. It's nothing more than a ritual to you. You're a snake. Right? And then he says, and what are you going to say? What were the descendants of Abraham? This is a common theme for them. They figured that they had salvation not by faith. They missed the whole point. They figured that because they had the blood of Abraham, that made them better than everybody else. And the law, keeping the law was a secondary thing. But the fact that they were descendants of Abraham, and he said, there's nothing to do with nothing. And what we see back to chapter 4 in Romans, what we see in, in Romans 4 here is that the issue was faith. And the issue is faith. Go to Titus chapter 1 for a second real quick. Titus chapter 1. <clears throat> Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Titus chapter 1, verse 10. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. The issue of eternal life, God made a promise to himself before the world began. He looked forward to have that promise fulfilled in us, you and me today. 
He looked forward, and what he did is he looked at Abraham and he said, I'm going to save Abraham before I give him the law, before it becomes a nation of Israel, if you will, before any of the promises are made, I'm going to save him by one thing, faith. And faith has always been the issue since before the world began. Right? And God keeps bringing it up. And bringing it up, the issue of Abraham and the issue of why Abraham is our father as well as the father of a nation. He's the father of a nation through the law and through blood. But he is the father of all believers because of faith. And that's the, that's the theme. A parallel to... Um, Jump back to chapter 217 for a second and see what the Jews do. Chapter 217. Chapter 2 what? Romans 217. Sorry. Romans chapter 217. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and retest us in the law, and make thy boast of God. The issue with the Jew was he boasted in the law. You see? He boasted in his words. He boasted in the fact that I keep the rules. I keep the commandments. We still have Christians today doing the same thing. I know people, I, 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 I'm teaching grace, and they're still doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah but, but what's the rule? What do, I, what do I need to do and not do? And what did that get him? John chapter 8, uh, John chapter 8, verse, I know we're doing a little bit of rabbit trail in here, but uh, bear with me. John chapter 8, verse 33. And see what it got that guy. All right? <clears throat> John chapter 8, verse 33. And it says, They answered him, We be, we be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. Uh, no, why did I say that? John chapter, oh, okay. Um, we we kind of covered that already, so sorry, I've got, a, I've got a double note here. But all that it ended up getting them was wrath. Jesus said, you're of your father the devil. John the Baptist said, you're vipers. Who hath warned you from the wrath to come? That's all it got them, the law. And yet, that was their focus. And they missed the whole point of faith. We're going over and over on the faith question. I know some of you got it, and you're probably going, oh, man, I got it. I got it. Good. I'm glad that you get it. And then, and then the, prop, the, the issue of why we're going over and over is because we so easily, to use it to coin a term, backslide into that legalistic viewpoint. But what about... And we forget faith. So, so my the, the point is I'm hammering that in faith, hammering it in faith, faith, faith. And then when you start to look at the everyday uh, incidences of your life, you start to go, I had to live it by faith. I'm not clipping on my am I talking loud? Because I don't know my allergies and I'm talking loud. So if I'm blowing people's eardrums, just go. <laughs> It's not streaming anyway. It's uh, oh, that's wonderful. All right. So the issue, of course, is that it isn't about you being part of being a Christian. It isn't you being part being raised in evangelical Christian or being raised in Catholicism. Or as I, I asked a gentleman the other day, I said, "So when did you first trust Christ as, as your personal Savior?" He said, "Well, I was baptized." What? How do we correlate the baptism? You see. The problem is that the rituals have been presented as the same or more powerful than faith. How simple the message is when it's by faith alone plus what? Nothing. Nothing. So what did you say? What? What did you say? Well, I said that's not what I asked you. <laughs> but we went, on, we went on to another conversation. So, no, and then I explained the gospel. The issue is... We have to understand that, and many of you in here, all of you in here understand that you've been saved by grace through faith plus nothing. Amen. Most Christians do not get that. They'll say, we're saved by grace through faith. I get that, yeah. And, no, 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 no. Yeah, but, no, no, no. 
yeah, but I gotta work on myself because I'm oh no 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 no. I'm saved by grace through faith plus nothing, and that and that makes me Colossians 2:10 what? Say it aloud. Complete in Christ. We are complete in Christ. So the issue is that faith. We're imputed righteousness by faith alone plus nothing, which the Pharisees here and the Jews are not getting. They go, yeah, but we got to do all the rituals. we got to do all the sacrifices. And go, no, 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 no. That's not their... They didn't understand the difference between their walk and their salvation. Get that? They weren't getting it. They were mixing the two. Now imagine if you do that in grace, if you mix the two, what happens? You become a legalist. What you say is, I'm saved by grace, but. I don't know how many people say that. And they'll all say, oh, hey man, brother, yes, pastor, you, we're saved by grace and faith. That's it. I've seen, I, I, I seen, I seen JWs, uh, Mormons. Yeah, we're saved by grace and faith. But when you get down to the details of what that means, oh, now it's a whole different animal, you see. And that's the problem, yeah. That's kind of what denominational people do. It sounds yes. almost like Pharisees and Sadducees, but I'm a Lutheran, but I'm a Baptist, but I'm exactly. a uh, okay. whatever. And that's exactly, and then Paul tries to deal with that. So the comment was, that's kind of what denominationalists do. And, and that's exactly right. Because the denominationalist is basically responding as a Pharisee, yeah, but I was raised Baptist. Yeah. Right? So therefore, I'm in. Yeah. You don't understand. Yeah, I did. I did the sinner's prayer. Yeah, I did one, two, three. Repeat after me. Right, I'm done. But the issue is a hard issue of faith and trust, not in something that you've done, not in something that you've repeated, not because you were part of a club, not because you were a descendant of Abraham. That didn't get you salvation. It didn't get the. It doesn't get the Gentile salvation. Most people go, yep, yep, got that. It didn't get the Hebrew salvation on. Okay? He just didn't get that. Right up until the point where Jesus is going, man, you, just, you guys just don't get it. And John's going, you're a snake. A whole lot of you, a bunch of snakes. Right? They were blind snakes. Though well, they were. And what did it get? Wrath. Go back and you see Romans chapter 2. Just jump back to Romans 2.23, if you will. And we'll cover that again. Romans 2.23, speaking of the Jew here, Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God has blasphemed among the Gentiles. Though uh, through you, as it is written, for the circumcision, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law judge thee who by the letter and, the circ and circumcision doth transgress the law. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is he that circum is neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man but of God. That's a little thick. You got to kind of go through that quickly to kind of get the gist, or you get lost all in the, in the little in the little sentences there. But you're getting that he's going. Listen, I'm boasting in the law that made me righteous. You see, Paul says, no, 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 you're not. Now, the issue, of course, is that God couldn't allow that to be true anyway. If God if God had allowed salvation to be an issue of being part of the nation of Israel, what would that have done to the Gentiles? They'd have been out. They're say out. That again? Can you say that again? If God, had, if God had allowed the issue of being under the law, circumcision under the law, descendancy of Abraham to be the criteria for salvation, all the Gentiles would have been what? Lost. Out. 
even the believing Gentile or Gentile nations of Jews, they would have been out. So the Pharisees didn't get that. We're the descendants of, the, descendants of Abraham. Can you imagine how they looked at the Gentile believers, even still at that point in time, if you became a Jew? You understand their thinking? <laughs> well, we'll let you in. <laughs> you know, but but you're it's still like that. It's it's go away. Still like that. Your smell is kind of you know. It's still like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. That was their attitude because they were the descendants. You get that with Christian people in denominations today. Why are they doing the exact same thing? Right? That's exactly what they're doing. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a Baptist. You're a Pentecostal. Yeah. Right? Paul tries to deal with that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He goes, what are you guys, have you lost it? <laughs> you know? Just in the fall last year, we were listening to a lot of messages that sound just like that fall. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I went through all those notes, so, okay. So, verse 12, Romans chapter 4, verse 12. Romans chapter 4, verse 12. So the issue here is, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of circumcision only, but also, who also walk in the steps of faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. The issue is the circumcision today must be like what? Verse 12, the uncircumcision. God turns this now. You want to be saved today? you got to be like the uncircumcision. you got to be by faith alone. Your circumcision has nothing to do with it. That's the gospel of the uncircumcision. By faith alone, salvation was given to Abraham, uncircumcised, eternal life was given to Abraham. That's the gospel of uncircumcision. And that's why Paul says that all men shall be judged by my gospel. Because even, remember, we're going back to Israel, and the issue is not that they're part of the nation. The issue is not that they follow the law. The issue is, did they have the faith of their father Abraham? Got it? Let that sink for a second. So the whole way along, it was always just about faith. And God saved Abraham before circumcision on purpose. So he said, okay, that's the criteria. Heck, he planned that. He planned that before the earth began. Way back here. He made a promise to himself, Titus 1-2. Right? So the issue is don't be like Israel, but be like the uncircumcised sized Abraham of old. That's the issue. Paul's bringing us to that issue. Don't be like Israel. Don't follow the law. How many denominations today will bring you back to the law? And they'll bring it to you time after time after time because they get all messed up and they get all mixed up in it and all of a sudden they're going, yes, we're saved by grace and faith, but you know what? We need to be baptized. Why? It's an ordinance. You know, the ordinance has been put on us. Really? We need to... Um, to uh, break bread and 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 and, uh, and follow the Lord's Supper. Why? Well, it's, it's an ordinance. You understand that that starts to the the issue in Romans chapter four here starts to question all of that stuff and put it at question now. Right? It starts to say, "Do you? Is there any?" Do we really need to do that? And I, I know a lot of people here might say, well, you know, I get the water baptism thing. Do I need to do the Lord's Supper too? We covered that with Ronnie Bedell last Sunday. You did? And we were, uh, yeah, last couple. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So my personal position is no. Okay. But that's a whole other that's a whole other message. And, yeah. and if yeah. Rodney looked at No. Why? He's telling me that has nothing to do with the rituals. It has nothing to do. Why am I bringing rituals in? If I bring one or two in, then I can add a whole bunch of other stuff in. And then I can say, okay, well, I don't have to keep the Sabbath. But you know what? I do need to do this, and I do need to do that. The problem with me looking at what I need to do 
is that I immediately say, not of him, all of me. I'm not complete in him. I'm partially complete in me. You see the issue of faith, then the gospel of the uncircumcision is by faith alone plus nothing. Okay? You got to get that. Now, that should t there's going to be all kinds of questions that comes up, but, 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 but what about this? But what if a person, what if a person trusted Christ? Remember your question. What if a person trusted Christ and then turned from him? See how that affects that question? Does it matter? No. Not, a, not for salvation. Not for salvation. No. Not for salvation at all. Now, a lot of people, oh, man, you've got some dangerous concepts going out there. People are going to want to sin. <laughs> they want to do that to begin with. That's what they wanted to do anyway. You didn't stop them. You just made them hide it behind closed doors. That's all you did. Because faith is an issue of the heart. Faith is an honesty, it's a pureness of the heart. It's not of what you show up outside, it's what's going on inside. Righteousness of faith is not the message of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is it? <clears throat> what did Jesus answer the young ruler when he said, what must I do to be saved? What did he say? The Keep the commandments. You see how that, 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 why people get, when they don't rightly divide, why do they get so mixed up now? Because they go, well, Jesus said keep the commandments. I had a, a fellow the other day uh, it, it, say to me, he said, read the four Gospels. I've read the four Gospels. I get it. But what's that got to do with my life in grace today? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Three. Nothing at all. Okay? I do understand but from the four Gospels that Christ died and rose again. That is where my message starts to begin with is do I believe that? Do I have faith in that? Then Paul comes along and says, by the way, that death, burial, and resurrection means something. It's going to give you something. If you have faith. faith. You see, it's, it's always back to faith. The problem that we have and, and people have so often is that they end up mixing law and legalism and they go, i got to try harder, try harder. We talked about this before, the grace principle and the law principle. Remember, the law principle says, if I do this, then these blessings will apply. Right? Grace says it's nothing of me, all of him. I trust him and I walk in him. I trust that he can do it. He has the power to, to do, we, we say that today, he has the power <coughs> to do what he has promised. Yes? Well, we had preached a lot that, okay, we just don't have to work for our salvation, mm -hmm. but uh, we have preached you should work and labor because the Lord wants you to for reward. He can yeah. Bless you. yeah, that's right. That's a, the right device. Yeah, that's that, that, that's right. That's exactly what 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 happened with the with the believing Jew is he got his inheritance how by following the law, by abiding, by enduring until the end. Right? He's gonna come out here, and what's he gonna do? I you have to endure, right? Works are the issue of inheritance, both for the Gentile and the Jew. The problem is people didn't get that message and they mixed the two. The Pharisee was doing the same thing. I'm the son of Abraham. I follow the law. I do this. I do that. And Christ said, what? You're the father of the devil. Huh. Right? You don't have faith. You don't have the faith of Abraham. You don't trust God. You don't trust God's word. You don't trust him. You don't believe in him. You believe in yourself. You see? I want to digest that a second. You see, the, 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 the reason I go over and over this, you notice how we go over it and then there's still something else that comes up and then another, wait a second, wait a second, that affects how I look at this or I have thought of this. And that's why we're going to go over and over it and then you should be able to get this. 
because it, it is a deprogramming process. That's what it is. You know, you get the, the kids that they used to join those cults and, mm -hmm. and they got brainwashed and they had to get out there and they had to go through a deprogramming process to change their thinking back to freedom and getting out of that. And that's the issue here, freedom. It is God loves freedom. Man wants rules and laws and thinks somehow that that makes him righteous. And nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing makes, that does not make him righteous. In fact, Romans tells us that he stores up wrath, he increases the wrath against himself, remember? Increases the wrath. As soon as we start to bring in works in our salvation, that somehow it's making us righteous, we negate the righteousness that Christ has imputed to us already. Now, that's a hard concept to get our mind wrapped around. That's a tough one. Because, yeah, we agree with that, but yet we got to do something else. Yet we, we've got to do the way. We don't walk in freedom. And the whole point of the gospel of the uncircumcision, the whole point of what Paul is talking about here is, I'm free. Christ has done it all on the cross. I'm complete in him who's above all principality and power. I'm free. Now, to get you to understand that in your everyday life becomes a deprogramming issue. Yeah. No, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> now, for the Acts 28 folks, I want to mention here, the Acts 28 folks, what they'll say is Romans does not have the same gospel message as Ephesians, which is nothing but foolishness. Because that is the same message in Ephesians as it is in Romans. Right? Now, I, I, I don't think any of you are really uh, uh, familiar with the Acts 28 position. There might be some people online who are. But understand that and the Acts 28 position says the body of Christ started at Acts 28, 28. The third time that Paul says, Lo, we turn to the Gentiles, is it 28, 28? Uh, and be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of the God is sent to the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Bang. So they go, oh, that's where the church started, the church the body of Christ. The church, the body of Christ, started with who first? Paul. Paul. You said in me first. I was saved as a pattern to them that should hereafter believe. I was the first one. Therefore, all those who believed after Paul in like manner were part of the church, the body of Christ. It had nothing to do with having two bodies, because that's what in essence what you end up. You tend to end up with two bodies of Christ, one that is up to Acts 28, and then they'll say, so then they'll look at the chronological date of when it was written. And understand that the scripture didn't have those chronological dates. We, we've put it in there. And they're not all correct, by the way. They're more tradition than anything. But and they'll say, well, you see. If it's Acts 28 and that puts us at, uh, that the church started, uh, that puts us at A.D. 63, therefore Romans is A.D. 60, therefore it's not sent to the body of Christ. So then you've got to start to find some books. Oh, okay. Then you get up to his prison epistles and go, oh, Ephesians A.D. 64, therefore, ah, oh, that must be to the body of Christ. Before that was not to the body of Christ. Is that confusing that guess? I don't want to confuse you guys, but there are people who believe that. And the problem that, that we're saying here is, is that no, because the message never changed from Romans to Ephesians. It's the exact same message. Peter never said under the prophetic program that you, that the circumcision had to act like the uncircumcision, like Paul has said here in chapter 4, verse 12. Peter never said that. Never said that at the beginning of Acts. It's not found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm sorry, what do you say? That? He never said to be saved, you need to act like the uncircumcised Abraham. Okay? But what Paul is saying here, Eric, is he's saying that's exactly what you need to do to be saved. You Circumcision, that's profited nothing. 
right? You need to have faith, the faith of Abraham, that's where your salvation is, and that's what the Jews' salvation was as well. Okay? But that's not the message that you have in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is it? This is not this message, and that's that's my point there. Okay? So Show the difference. There. Yes. Because of what you said, I went to the Acts 28 at the end, mm -hmm. and it said Paul dwelt two years, whole years, in his own hired house, received all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So he was still preaching his gospel message in that time. Of course, yeah. Right. From 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 the moment that he came out of Arabia, um, Acts chapter 11. Um, that's where he would have uh, he, Paul visit uh, straight away preach Christ the synagogues and all that. So, so Paul, after being saved, uh, goes to Arabia and he gets the revelation of the mystery. He comes out, he, he preaches it, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, but you already know that Paul, being the first saved, that even in Acts chapter ten, that that uh, the the centurion. Uh, believed that on uh, the message from Peter, Peter did unknowingly just repeated a story. He said that Christ died on the cross, was buried, and rose again, and he's boom, and all of a sudden he was saved. Why? He exhibited the exact uh, the exact message of the gospel of the uncircumcision that Paul is talking about here. He said. But he trusted Christ's death, burial, and the resurrection of the cross. It, he said, all right, Jesus was died on the cross. Okay, fine, lots of people died on the cross. Get it. He's buried. Wonderful. If the story had ended there, and the end of the chapter is going to do that, there is no salvation. Right? Anyway, we're not there yet. But the fact that he rose again, the centurion said, that's got to be a God. That's got to be God himself because only God has the power to raise a man from the dead. Yeah. Hallelujah, he saved. That is Acts chapter 10. Yeah. And Peter is stunned, completely stunned, has all of his buddies there. And they're all there to make sure that he, because he's talking to the Gentiles. And the attitude was, you can't even eat with them because they're... They're, they're garbage, you know, don't eat with the roaches, those Gentiles. So he brings all these Jews with him. So I don't know what to tell you. Tells him the story of Jesus from the beginning, goes all the way, death, burial, and resurrection. As soon as he gets through that, he goes, whoo, they start speaking in tongues. <laughs> He's going, whoa, should we, should we baptize him? Because he goes, I know what the sequence is, <laughs> you know. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta repent and be baptized, and then the gift of the Holy Spirit's gonna come. But wait, these guys heard a story. They never did any repenting. They couldn't repent. Why? Because they weren't part of the nation of Israel. The message wasn't them to begin with. So there was nothing for them to repent from. They never were in to begin with. When we talk about Israel being born again, they were in. They got out. They repented and they were washed and they got back in. You must be born again. You were already born of the nation. And what you guys did is you strayed and went off the path. You see? So now you got to be clean. Now you got to say, I was wrong. I believed in the law. I believed that somehow being part of the nation of Israel and doing these rituals, that made me saved. But I never, I never felt saved. I always struggled with sin and so on and so forth. He said, listen. You need to change that way and follow the Messiah. Here's your Messiah. He's going to take you into the kingdom here. Repent. Change your mind. Change that way of thinking. Be baptized because the, the first thing the priest did before he entered in to do anything in the temple, what did he do? Wash. He washed. Yeah. Got to wash. Yeah. That's the whole point of baptism, right? Yeah. So he's washed. So the priest gets washed up. Israel is a nation of? Priests. And they said, we like sheep have gone astray. They're the yes. sheep. We're yes. not sheep. No. And Jesus right. is not He's not sheep. even mentioning. He's not even talking about the Gentiles at that point in no. time. And, 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 and the point is, I mean, even when you go through the four Gospels, the four Gospels are not to the Gentiles directly. <clears throat> if you think you're getting your salvation and your holiness and your righteousness from the four Gospels, you are sorely mistaken. In fact, that's a one-way ticket to hell for a Gentile today. And I'm going, ooh. 
Because if you follow the message in the Gospels, it says to follow the commandments. What did Paul say in chapter 4 here? That it has to be like the uncircumcised Abraham by faith alone. Why? Because it's not about you to begin with. And if it was about you, then this would have never happened. See, the four Gospels don't start after the cross. They tell the story up to the cross. They finish something. They finish an old covenant. They finish the law. Romans chapter 15, real quick, Romans chapter 15, verse 8. Romans chapter 15, verse 8. Paul describes what Christ was doing on earth. I understand, folks, that Christ is our Savior. He died and rose again, and that by trusting in His sacrifice on the cross, that that's how you get salvation. But that's not what's being spoken of before the cross. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are before the cross. And, and slightly afterwards, Paul says in, in Romans chapter 15, verse 8, Now I say, to, I say that Jesus Christ was what? The Savior of the Gentiles and all mankind? A minister of Gentiles and Jews alike? For there's no difference? Of the circumcision. For and who are the circumcision? Jews. The Jews. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm what? Promises made to the fathers. <laughs> That the Messiah would come and that he would save Israel. Jesus came as Messiah. Jesus says to the Seraphonician woman, she says, Lord, I need healing. And he goes, hey, not until the children get filled. See, I'm here to fulfill the promises of the Father. The promises made to the fathers. That's what I'm here for. You can't get anything yet. Salvation is of the Jew and I need to deal with the children first. Then there's something coming for you. That's fine. And what Jesus does with that Seraphonician woman is he starts to, 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 to say to her, he says, because you have faith, he wanted to make a point, Israel, it's about faith like your father had. Man, if you had the faith of that woman, he said, I've been trying to teach you faith and all you guys think is you're a descendant of Abraham and you have the law and you boast in the law and you think you're holy. Right? That's what's going on. Jesus was a minister of the circumcision. Jesus was not a minister of the Gentiles in the uncircumcision. Paul was raised. Go to chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated. <laughs> separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets and in the Holy Scriptures, what did he promise? Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made in the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. He promised that by whom we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. That's not Jesus' message in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What happened is that with the death, burial, and resurrection of, of Christ, Christ came down, raised up Paul, and said, By the way, I'm letting everybody in through faith. So it's not you being part of a ritual. It's not you being part of a church or a group. It's not you being part of a denomination. It's not you being raised up in, in a Christian home. Folks, if you think that that is going to get you into heaven, you're wrong. You're seriously, seriously wrong. It's an individual issue, not a national issue. Not a family issue. Not a denominational issue. You don't get in simply because you're part of something. You get in because in your heart you trusted in the 
work, the finished work of Christ. What's the last thing Christ said on the cross? It is finished. It is finished. I've done it. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I had hid in my heart in eons past that I was going to do this, and it's done. Now, I'm going to offer salvation to everybody by faith, based on this crossword. And I'm going to save everybody back here, not by what they did, but by what I've done. I passed over their sins. I'm no longer passing over their sins. I've paid for their sins. How did they get in? By being part of, of Israel? Faith. By being a descendant of Abraham? By faith. That Jew back here got in by faith in God's word. And what I, I said to you yet a while ago is that I was talking to that brother. He said, I just believed that the word of God was without error and it was his word and I had to believe that. He's in. He didn't even know he's in. He's in. And then the Lord said, I'll reveal it to you. As soon as he trusted that word of God and said it's, it's God's word, then the Holy Spirit revealed Hebrews, Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. Then all of a sudden all the scales started to come off. And he started to look at stuff that other people looked at and said, oh, this is true. And he said, what is this stuff? See, the Gentiles were not trying to be righteous. They knew they were lost, a bunch of sinners that Christ had died for, and they received the righteousness of faith. The Jews still didn't get it. <laughs> he said, I'm in by my works. Nothing we could do, nothing they could do, they got in by faith alone. That is the message of the gospel of the uncircumcision. That is the gospel that Paul refers to as saying that in the latter, in the last day, where does it says? <clears throat> that everyone will be judged by his gospel? Yes. I think that's in two. I'm in Romans chapter 8. That's why I'm going, man, that doesn't look right. Romans 2. Verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the sins of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. What is that gospel? The gospel of faith. You see? That's what it is. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they... Talking about Israel. For they be... Chapter 9, 10, 11 are about who? Israel. Israel. Very good. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Do you get that? Christ is the end of the law. Did Christ die before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Did Christ die in the book of Malachi? He died at the end. And Christ was the end of what? He was the beginning of the body, the church, the body of Christ? No. He was the end of the law. That's why Paul said he was a minister of the circumcision. To fulfill the promises made to the fathers that there would be a descendant from the root of Jesse. And then he would save his people. How? By the same method that he'd established before time began, by faith. Make sense? Clear as mud? Okay. But the Jews said, I'm going to work, I'm going to strive, then I'll get it. Paul says, no, no, it's not the way it works. You never got it. That was the problem. Case in point, John the Baptist says, what? You're a bunch of vipers. You're a bunch of snakes. You should have figured this out. It wasn't by your work. You sit there and you walk around and you're all pious and you pray out in the open. Who's looking? 
<laughs> oh, I'm so holy. Thank you, God. You see, that's what he was doing. Somehow thinking that he was righteous. Huh? Does that remind you of, 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 of some denominations today? why some of the denominations name saints. Do you understand that as a believer, the moment you trusted Christ, you became what? The saint. A saint. The saint. You don't need to be, you don't need to have a big ceremony no. a thousand years after you die yeah. because you were persecuted by the very church that's saying you're now a saint. Okay? That's a funny one. Right? Oh yeah, we burned the stake, but he's a saint. <laughs> wow. So when were you wrong? Then or now? <laughs> you see the joke of it all? It's, it's just, it's, it's a joke. If that was the case, that you had to act and conform to a religious dogma and ideology and look and feel, and you had to become a, a you know, this is the whole problem with the whole monk thing, isn't it? Now the monk said, oh, I, I'm not holy. I, yeah, I, I, you know what i got to do? i got to go and separate myself from you things, people. <laughs> and I'm going to put a, shave my head. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make myself holier than you. Huh? You ever met Sister Betsy better than thou? Brother Harold's holier than thou? <laughs> met, met those guys? Yeah. So they have that attitude that somehow their work has made them more righteous than everybody else. And they'll sit there. Right? That's the problem with the Jew. Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Romans chapter 11, verse 13. We're almost done. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as... I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are of my flesh, which are of my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Do you now understand these verses after what we've been going through? Do you get that? You go there, ha uh ha. -huh. Israel was cast away, they fell. There was a diminishing. And then all of a sudden, everybody got in. How? By faith of Abraham, same way. Not, they didn't become spiritual Israel. That's, that's baloney. That's taking things completely out of context. You have to start ripping out chapter 11. Here of Romans, you're going to say that kind of stuff. Has God cast away Israel? <clears throat> God forbid. Uh, where, where are we here? Um, uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> That's in Romans. In Romans Romans chapter 11, and so in verse 26. And so shall and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away of ungodliness. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved of the Father's sakes, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He's not going to change his mind. So I'm not changing my mind. And yet you get a whole bunch of people who will say that he changed his mind. He, 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 what he did is he, it, they'll turn it into a legalistic argument. And what they do with the argument is they say, well, you see, Israel rejected Christ. She didn't follow the rules that she was given, so she was cast aside. And now if we follow the rules, we get what was promised to her. Wrong. That's not true at all. That is so far off. But that is the doctrine that you'll get out of the Catholic Church, out of the Reform Movement, and that's what they're doing. You see, they've missed the point of faith alone without works. They just keep bringing it back in the whole time. 
And but he said, no, the, what was promised to, to them is without repentance. God is not going to change his mind about it. He's going to redo it. And as soon as the day of grace is over, the rapture happens. And folks, this was not invented by John Darby. It's in the book. The fact that John Darby recognized it, great kudos to him. But that didn't mean he's a, he preached it because he saw the truth. The rest of them were blinded by, by old religious silliness. When was John Darby? 1800. Oh, I see. I'm not familiar with yeah. him. Sorry. He's pretty much the, he would be called uh, the, the, the founding guy of, of, of the brethren, of the, uh, of the brethren, Plymouth Brethren, okay? Which is pretty much what I grew up in, so did Rhea. Okay. And your dad. Okay. Very close to, 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 to us uh, as Grace believers. Very close. Not not but 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 there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, right division realization in, in the Brethren movement. And certainly um, unlike the funny thing is, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, how did you, you come up with uh, how did you understand right division? And most people will go back to uh, JC O'Hare. And if you go in, in my family, that's not where it came from. Right? Now there was to be a partly, partly came in, but it actually came in from 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 people, well, I say <laughs> I mean God has always had his truth out there. Um, it's just the, and, 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 anyhow, I digress. Uh, we're, I got four minutes left, so uh, let's go here. Okay. So this is not the prophecy program that we're in today. It's the mystery program. And here's the problem. We start to get all these people and they say, oh, well, you know what? Let's go and let's talk about what prophecy is today. And here are the sign of the times. And, and Israel has done that. And, Ru and, 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 and Russia has done this. And this is going on with Iran. And, and so on and so forth. We're not in the prophecy program. You're wasting your time talking about it. A total waste of time, go fishing. Okay? Because what happens is that people start to try to figure out what's going on here to figure out the, the, the coming back of Christ. And then you'll get guys who will take that, get all mixed up, and they'll go, rapture's going to happen on this day. Wasn't there some guy that just did this a little while ago? Harold Campy, about three or four years ago, we decided that there was going to be, uh, the rapture was going to be them. Yeah, but just we're talking about the past six months. There was another oh, fellow oh, that did it, and then the day came and went. September. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, but, but, you, that, they, see, that's the problem. He, the problem is, the problem is that he's looking, and they are looking. The, the the prophecy people are looking at this. They're trying to figure out what's going on and where we're sitting today. Yeah. Problem. Prophecy in the 70 weeks of Daniel are down to certain, to a particular number of years. You can count them. You can be guaranteed that they're going to happen when they happen. At the 69th week, there's seven years left. Christ died. Rose again. What's supposed to happen? Tribulation. Tribulation. 70th week of Daniel. That's what's supposed to happen. It didn't happen. That was 2,000 years ago. Now I got some problems with my doctrine. I got some problems with my Bible. I got the, a whole bunch of different issues going on here. And so if I don't understand that God raised Paul, not as the 12th apostle, you get these people who talk, they'll say, they'll say, Matthias, when he was chosen to replace Judas, they'll say, well, Peter acted in the flesh. Where did you get that in that scripture? Because I've been looking for it and I can't find it. You know why? Because it ain't there. And you know what the Bible says about when you start to add to scripture or take away? <laughs> right? It ain't there. You're injecting it because you, you want it to fit your idea about what the Bible says. I hit, let, me, let me suggest this. Forget about what you think it is. Why don't you take a look and say, what say the scripture? So let's go. Scripture. Right? What say the scripture? Let the Bible speak 
for itself, and then you won't make all these kind of silly mistakes. Yes. Sorry, I've got to ask because, you know, we've been listening to some of those Bible prophecy things for some time, and they say, look at what has happened to Israel, and they still exist, and they've had so many enemies against them to wipe them out, and that's, you know, all these proofs that it's God still protecting them. Because that six day war and. Yeah, they're real Christ. protected. They're real protected. They got a little sliver of land like this that God actually promised them. And everybody's trying to kill them all day long. <laughs> and, 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 and they just, they're trying to defend themselves. They can't even go shopping without the kids getting blown up. They're real protected. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, it, it's just, I listen to this stuff and I yeah. go, are you listening to yourself? Do you know what you're actually saying? Right? And is the Israel of today, can I ask you a question, are they a holy nation unto God? No. What are you talking about then? Yeah. Right? Jesus rejected all the non-believers. Most of them are atheists to begin with. <laughs> right? They believe they're Jews. Why? Well, we're descendants of Abraham. <laughs> they don't even believe in Judaism. I had a fellow, I told you guys, I had a fellow, he was an atheist. He said, I'm a Jew. I said, you can't be a Jew. Why? Wow, you're an atheist. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm a Jew, though. No, you don't believe in Judaism. Well, that doesn't make me a Jew. Uh, what? <laughs> anyway, I, I, I'm getting off here. So the reason you can have eternal life is because it was a part of the promise to Abraham. That's the reason why. You're made righteous the same way as Abraham was. By faith alone. You just trusted, and that's it. That's how it's done today. That's the manifold wisdom of God. That He planned that all in eternity past. Eons ago, I don't know, it's not this chart, it's way back over here. Knock my guitar over. <laughs> he promised himself that he was going to do it. And all of a sudden, he comes over, finds this fellow here. So, do you trust me, Abraham? Absolutely. And that's how our attitude is going to be. Do you trust me? Absolutely. And that's what God said. Let's close the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to study. We ask that you would increase our, our, our faith in you, our trust in your word, uh, rightly divided and without error in, in the King James Version for us today in English. We, we, we want to be able to live in freedom and understand what you've done for us and, and everything that you've given us. Free. Freely given. Saved by grace plus nothing. Thank you so much, Lord, because otherwise we could have never been saved. If we had had anything to do with ourselves, we'd have never been able to be saved. And you knew that. And you died and rose again and gave us that gift. Thank you, Lord. Just a minute. Amen. Thank you.